on April 20th last year. He talked about a young boy, a teenager who lived in the uh, United Kingdom. He stayed in a duple house. In the first floor, he was with his laptop watching pornography. And that's when he heard footsteps of his mother climbing down, climbing up the stairs. He tried to close that website, but it was, the system got hung, you know, the, the screen froze. And mummy is coming up. He is in big problem. So he took a hard object in his desk and smashed it at the screen. His laptop screen was broken. Mummy came and she did not find out anything. That day in April 2015 he went to Twitter and told the story. His mother did not know anything about Twitter and Facebook and like most mothers. He said this is what I was doing and uh, this is what I did and he even talked about that particular website that he was browsing and he put it on Twitter. The vice president of that filthy website company read that tweet and do you know what he decided to do? He asked, his, he asked his staff to get in touch with that young boy who lived in England. He got his address. And from that pornography company, that they sent a free new laptop to that young boy. They congratulate him, him for choosing his filthy website when there are four million filthy websites and they said for your continued pleasure from our company, we are giving you a free laptop so that you can continue watching porn from our company. See the zeal with which a porn company promotes filth in this world. This morning, young people, I have a question for you. If a porn company's owner or vice president can have so much zeal to promote filth, Will you have a zeal to be a corn for Jesus, a martyr for Jesus? Do you have the zeal to be a corn for Jesus in a world where people are pushing corn to make a quick buck? Will you be a corn, one corn of wheat for
for Jesus in the one life that you have. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus was saying, you must be a corn, a seed which falls to the ground and dies. And when it dies, there is a great tree, there's a great crop and there is a great benefit. Graham Stains was one such corn of wheat. 1941, born in Australia. 1965 came to Orissa as a missionary corn of wheat. January after the jungle camp was over, after speaking God's word there, when he was sleeping in the station wagon, he and his two children, Philip 10 years old, Timothy 6 years old, as he was sleeping in the station wagon, you know, we don't know what happened, whether they were shot, whether they were killed, whether they were cut, you know, his station wagon was set on fire. Eyewitnesses say that they saw Graham Stains hugging, you know, hugging all the three of them, Graham Stains and his two children hugging each other when they discovered the burnt dead body. He was a corn of wheat. He died for the Lord Jesus and the cause of the propagation of the gospel. This morning, I am going to preach a message to you from the book of Amos. It is really a Bible study, I would say. At the end of this Bible study, you, I am praying that you will have an urgency which Mahendra Singh Dhoni had in this video. Video number one. Can we please pray? That same urgency. Yes, that's what. This is in the T20 World Cup 2016. India versus Bangladesh. The last few minutes of the game. Bangladesh need two or one ball. And Dhoni collects the ball as a wicket keeper and runs as fast as Usain Bolt to break the stumps. And India win that game by one run and stay in the T20 World Cup. 
जितने बोले अब जहाँ पढ़ने की समय से रोड पे कवर करे आओ से बहुत सुख भी कर जाइए If we are delayed, India would be knocked out effectively. If if we are delayed, yeah. India would be knocked out of the World Cup. How? Jodi, Jodi, how the World Cup will be held? That is the World Cup final. The bunch will be held. When we see the story of Amos and how he received God's call for ministry, God's call to be a missionary, God's call to go to places where Yahweh told him to go. You will also receive that same urgency to run to the last man in Orissa, last man in India, and tell him about Jesus. Amos, where did you live? He lived outside of Jerusalem. He lived in Tekoa. Amos, what do you do for a living? One season he will pluck fruit from the tree. Another season he would be taking care of sheep. He would be doing dra dra dra. He was a simple man. How many of you think you are a very simple person? Are you a simple man? God can use you. Are you from a small village? God can use you. Do you uh, do you have a simple job like plucking a fruit or taking care of sheep? God can use you. Don't you 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 don't know English? God can use you. Even Oriya, you can't speak properly. You God can use you. You don't know to read. You don't know to read. God can use you. You live in a small hut and a small house. God can use you. God wants your availability, not your ability. Amos lived about 700 years before Jesus Christ came to this world. And from his town outside of Jerusalem, God told him to go to North India or North Israel. And God told him to speak to the king. God told him to speak, preach to the people there. They were all wicked people. The king was a proud man. He wanted to tell him that if the Israel does not turn back to the living God Yahweh, a country called Assyria will come and overtake them. So he was telling the people to repent, turn away from their wickedness and come to the living God. Otherwise, God's judgment will come and the judgment will come through the marching Assyrian army.